In this lecture, I'm going to discuss character and how to think about how characters in stories create meaning. Very simply, a character is just an imaginary person in a narrative, in a story. And characters can be human, they can be animals, or they can be other, they can be objects. Uh, or inanimate things, or even principles can be characters in stories. It's whoever or whatever is acting in the story. Character as Weltanschauung. That's a very long and scary German word that I can't really pronounce, but basically it just means worldview. Uh, in a worldview, we all have our own worldview. That is, our general attitude towards and perspective on the world, our understanding of the world, and how things work. Or another way to put this might be our ideology. So we can think about characters as being embodiments of a particular worldview. So we ask ourselves, what do the character's actions and reactions, their words and thoughts, the images, objects, and ideas that are associated with the character, and the descriptions of that character, the way they're described by the narrator or other characters in the story, what does that reveal to us about that character's values, their beliefs, their ideals, their goals, their motivations? What is it that we can understand about their Weltanschauung, their worldview, their ideology, from what they do, from what we can see? What is this person embodying about what perspective or philosophy are they embodying? So a few famous fictional characters and very simplified versions of what their worldviews might be. If you were to put it in one or two sentences, what would this character's philosophy on the world be? So Superman, for example. You might say his philosophy would be always fight for justice and good will win out. Batman, on the other hand, his philosophy would be something like, criminals need to be punished and terrorized. The world's a dark place, so we need to fight fire with fire. Darth Vader, what would his worldview be? Something perhaps like, the dark side is the key to ultimate power. Or, those who grab power through the dark side are the ones who deserve it most. Um, some characters from Game of Thrones. Danny Targaryen, Khaleesi, her worldview might be something like the Targaryens are the rightful rulers and I will conquer with my dragons. That's her view of the way the world works. Cersei Lannister, on the other hand, her view would be something like a woman must do anything to protect herself and her children because that's what she does. The world, again, is a harsh place for women, so we must do whatever it takes to defend ourselves. And finally, Tyrion Lannister, everyone's favorite. His worldview, his philosophy on life might be something like, life is absurd, so have as much fun as you can. And again, these are all very simplified ways of putting it, but the idea here is that each of these characters and the characters in stories have a certain philosophy that defines the way they look at the world. And in some way, the story is showing us the consequences of that philosophy. What's the importance of character? Well, of course, the characters are the actors in the narrative. Without characters, you have no story because there's no one to do anything. The character conflict is central to the plot. It's the conflict between the characters or sometimes within the characters that lead to the plot. Without the character conflicts, nothing would happen. So how do the characters' personalities, their philosophies, their worldviews, lead them into conflicts with themselves, with each other, with the outside world? In what ways do their philosophies lead to conflict or cause conflict? Um, and character, so character leads to plot, but also plot shapes character. Without the characters and their conflicts, nothing would happen, but the things that happen then transform the characters. And then finally, the characters' conflicts often dramatize larger and more abstract concepts. So when we think about these philosophies, worldviews that the characters have, how are these philosophies sufficient or insufficient for dealing with reality? And how do the, char how do the, the characters and their conflicts show us the allegorical or symbolic conflict between 
the views, the ideologies that the characters represent and embody. So what's the larger conflict that the individual conflict between the characters is symbolizing? When talking about character, there's a few different things that we can think about, a few different terms that we can use to apply to them. Um, so we think about them as static versus dynamic, as flat versus round, major versus minor, protagonist versus antagonist, and sometimes, although it's not as rare, especially today, in most forms of stories, hero versus villain. So over the next few slides, let's talk about what each of these different categories is about. So static versus dynamic, this is about change. Static characters don't change over the course of the story. They start out as one thing, they end as one thing. They don't learn, they don't have any modifications. Dynamic characters are ones that do change over the course of the story. Something happens to them, they're different at the end from the way they were at the beginning. And this change can be external, it can be a change in job, in status, in age, or so forth. More often, and more interestingly, it's an internal change. Something about their belief system, or their attitude, their values, um, or both. And that's actually, I would say, most common, is that it's an external change that symbolizes or represents an internal change. So does the character change over the course of the story or, or not? And again, this can be a subtle question sometimes. The changes might be very subtle. And this is what determines if they are static, stay the same, or dynamic changing. Some questions to ask when thinking about static versus dynamic. How does the character's philosophy or worldview contribute to what happens? How does it contribute to the action of the story? How does the plot change this character or not change them? And how does the character change what happens in the story? How does the character affect what goes on? And why does the character change or remain the same? And what's meaningful about that change or lack of change? Is this a failure because the character has failed to learn something or respond in some way? Or is it somehow noble in that the character perhaps has stood up for their beliefs even when they've been pressured to change them? So what is important about static and dynamic? What does it actually show us about the character's journey? Flat versus round characters, or we could also call this two-dimensional characters versus three-dimensional characters. So flat or two-dimensional characters are simple. They have a few major tra traits, a few major characteristics that are notable, and they're usually more predictable. They lack a sense of inner life. They are defined by superficial characteristics. So flat characters are less realistic or less human in some sense. They can still be interesting or exciting, but they don't quite seem like real people. They're more like stereotypes. Round characters or three-dimensional characters have a fullness of being that makes them seem more real. They're complex. They're multifaceted. They're unpredictable in the ways that they act, but realistic, because, of course, real people are often unpredictable in the way that they act. And there's a sense that these characters have an inner life, a real psychology. And this might be expressed through thoughts. We might actually hear their thoughts, or it can be only suggested through their behaviors. So round characters are less stereotyped. They're more like real people. They seem more complex and to have their own will, rather than being just, again, flat characters, uh, stereotyped characters. So why are they important? What's the importance of flat versus round? Round characters are usually, again, more interesting and realistic for us. Um, they explore more complex emotions and ideas, and they show us different perspectives. They show us what it's really like to be someone else. Flat characters, they are often more purely symbolic or representative. They might stand in for particular ideas or perspectives rather than being real people whose lives and emotions we care about. Um, and a similar, something similar to flat characters, another type of flat character, is called stock characters. And these are the really obvious character types or stereotypes uh, 
that frequently appear in narratives. So the mad scientist, the reckless cop, the damsel in distress, the mysterious stranger, the noble hero, the tortured soul, right? All the stock stereotypes that you know exactly what they're going to say, what they're going to do, what they feel. These are a particular type of flat characters. Some stories, um, however, use the flat or stock characters and they produce new ideas by showing us the inner lives of what seem to be traditional stock characters. So one way that a lot of writers will make something more interesting is they'll take one of these flat stereotype characters and make them into a real person. What's really going on in that mad scientist's head? What's really motivating that reckless cop as opposed to just some stereotype? On to major and minor characters. Pretty obvious, I think, by the title. Major characters or main characters. They're the most important ones in the story. They're the ones that receive the most attention. Um, and they're usually the characters that we as readers identify with. So those are our major characters, the ones we really follow. Minor characters are less important. They just receive less attention. They're usually ones that we don't care about quite as much. They're sidekicks, whatever. We may not be as invested in them or identify with them. Note, however, minor characters can still play very important roles in the story through their actions um, and their interactions with main characters. So, for example, the, the apothecary who sells the poison in Romeo and Juliet, even though he's only in the play for a very brief period, he's a minor character, he still plays, obviously, a very important role because of the action that he performs. So, major and minor characters pretty obvious. Now when thinking about the major characters in a story, we want to think about the protagonist and the antagonist. The protagonist is the main character of the narrative and it's the focus of the central story. It, again, the character that we're an identifying with for the most part. The antagonist is the character or force that opposes the protagonist, the person that they're struggling with. Now, it's important to note that this is not the same as good versus evil. The antagonist might be a good person, but they're the person that the protagonist is struggling against. So if the story is about a kid who wants to go out and borrow his parent's car, but his dad won't let him borrow the car, the dad is the antagonist there. He's the person that the character is struggling against, even though he's not evil or a villain. So the protagonist, who are we identifying with? The antagonist, who are they struggling against? Or what are they struggling against? Comparable to the protagonist-antagonist struggle, but importantly different from it, is the hero versus the villain. The hero is, of course, the character who's especially good, virtuous, powerful, etc. The villain is the evil character who opposes the hero. Pretty obvious there, we know who heroes and villains are. Um, in modern literature, um, there's been the emergence of the anti-hero. And this is the protagonist who we like, who we root for, who's the main character of our story, but who is in many ways the opposite of the traditional hero. So you can see the examples I've given here. Dexter from the TV show Dexter is a serial killer who kills other serial killers, so obviously he's not a traditional hero because he's a murderer, but he is our protagonist, so he's an anti-hero. Like, for example, Steve Austin, the pro wrestler, or Bender from Futurama. People that we like, people that we read about, that are our focus, that, are, that we identify with, but they have some, perhaps, bad qualities that don't make them purely virtuous or good in a traditional sense. So a cautionary note, just be aware that protagonist and antagonist are different from hero and villain. A protagonist does not equal a hero, an antagonist does not equal a villain. Modern stories don't usually feature straightforward heroes or villains. Superhero stories, we might say, are, are an exception, but even those can be more complex. But generally, in today's world, we don't believe anymore in the pure hero or the pure villain the way we might have you know, hundreds of or even thousands of years ago. So more commonly today, 
protagonists can be deeply flawed. They have problems. They do things that we might even disagree with. They might even conflict with each other, like in, for example, the Civil War Marvel movie, uh, uh, Captain America versus Iron Man, right? Both protagonists, but both flawed. And, on the other hand, antagonists and even villains in some superhero stories, for example, might have sympathetic qualities or motivations, reasons we can understand why they might be that way, as opposed to just they are evil because we said they're evil. So more commonly, it's, it's, it's a lot more complex than straight up good versus evil. And characters are more realistic and relatable oftentimes. And usually, again, in most stories, superhero type stories accepted, the conflicts are more relevant to normal life. And in normal life, we often don't have heroes battling villains for life or death situations. It's flawed people conflicting with other flawed people over everyday things. So this is just important to recognize that a protagonist and a hero are not the same thing. Antagonist and a villain are not the same thing. Being the main character doesn't mean you're good. Being the antagonist doesn't mean you're evil, and so forth. Building on that, it's important to be aware of the complexity of characters. That is, a character can be flat, that is a two-dimensional character, but still be dynamic. They can still change over the course of the story. On the other hand, a character can be round, can be a three-dimensional, realistic, psychologically believable character, but static. They can stay basically the same. Um, or a character can be flat and static and round and dynamic, right? So there's any combination there. Um, and a character can be villainous, evil, or morally questionable, but still be the protagonist. Again, the example of the TV show Dexter. And a character can be good or even heroic, and still be an antagonist. So we don't want to make assumptions that just because someone's the protagonist, they're totally good and we can't question anything they do, um, or that the character is an antagonist, that they must be evil, um, et cetera, et cetera. We want to be attuned to the complex ways in which stories can show us different types of characters, because of course, again, in real life, people are unendingly complex. So to wrap up, think about the character as the embodiment, the representation of a particular perspective on life. What is this character's philosophy of the way the world works? And how does that help me to understand on a deeper level and on a grander level what ideas this story is dealing with? Think about the interactions between the character and the plot. How do the character conflicts create the events of the plot, motivate and lead to the plot? And how do the events that occur transform the characters? What's the meaning in the character conflicts and their developments? Again, thinking about them as embodiments of a particular philosophy or perspective, what are the larger conflicts that we see between different values, different philosophies, different ideologies? How do the changes in the character show us what happens to these values and the ideologies or how they work in the real world. And then what are the types of characters that we see? Are they flat, round, static, dynamic, major, minor, protagonist, antagonist? And by understanding those in those terms, what does that tell us about the role that they play in the story, the way they interact with other characters, and their importance? So these are all some important things to think about and questions to ask yourself as you think about who are these people in the story and what do they do, what meaning can I get from these imaginary characters.